Well, Dave Neville, the big story this year about the Epic Flash and the Epic Flash Sub-Zero is the face and artificial intelligence and machine learning. Is this the way we're headed? Is this the way golf is going? I think the robots are taking over the world, Donald. Uh, a few years ago, we made a huge investment in supercomputers. Our head of R&D, Doc Hawk, went to our CEO, the chip, and said, I really think there's something to this artificial intelligence and machine learning, and I think we need to invest in it. Chip agreed, and this is the first product, not only from Callaway, but in all of golf, to use artificial intelligence and machine learning. Okay, and you know, as we said there, this is, a, this is the face, this is a, a, a machine learned face. Is, is this going to move to other parts of the club? Is it, is it going to move to irons? Where do you see it going? Well, this is the first product we've used it for, but we can see it being used for uh, other iterations as well, because what it allows you to do is come up with so many prototypes that you couldn't have done before. So with this, this face, typically we would do for a driver five to seven iterations. So our previous X face design, and we work on them, we work on them, work on them, and said, that's it. Now, with the artificial intelligence and machine learning, we're able to do 15,000, and that was just in the first product that we've used it for. Our supercomputer ran for almost a month straight, running 24-7, working on all these virtual prototypes to come up with the best design possible. So we could see this being used in golf ball, we could see this being used in iron faces, also maybe in the body and the, the shaping, the aerodynamics of it. There's tons of different um, opportunities to use the AI and machine learning. Do you have to tell the supercomputer that there are certain parameters a driver must look like a driver if the supercomputer says to you in a couple of years time Dave we've come up with a new shape completely but you don't like the look of it but yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what keeps it from being, you can't just go out and just buy a big computer and just say, hey, run the driver program and turn it on. We actually daisy chain together seven or eight different programs just to make this design work, and our engineers need to be working with it to set the parameters of what is a conforming shape, what does it look like, you know, because it might make something that looks as flat as a pancake exactly. and say, that's the most aerodynamic, okay. and say, you can't hit a golf ball with that, you know, so we did have to put in some parameters. It's gotta be conforming to USGA and RNA rules it has to be conforming to the CT. It's got to not break at tour player speed. So there are a few rules, but it's basically taking a hands off on the design and letting the computer go, 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 and see what it comes up with. Is one of the main rules not to be, are we going to be able to produce this, you know, actually economically when it comes down to it. That was one of the biggest things with this face and part, part of why it took us so long, I mean we invested in that supercomputer about four years ago to actually come up with the actual driver to, to go along with it is because you actually have to build it. You know, the yeah. amount of machining that goes into that face, as you know with that face there's a, a, a series of humps and ripples and yeah. bumps and it's not intuitive and it is not easy to make. It's got to be heat treated, it's got to be machined, it's hours just to make each one of those faces and we're making thousands of them. Well thanks for the chat. So guys, you know, when you look at a driver, there's a lot of technology. I know our prices in golf are, are the best, but there's a lot more to a driver than meets the eye. Machines are taking over. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Donna.